After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled, to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked. God is good, and all the time. Let me thank those of you who cooperated with the pastor in moving a little further up. You can ask a church to come and clean up the church. Everyone will come, and they'll spend hours. You can ask a church, come and go to the community and distribute food. Everyone will come. You ask a church member to move from one pew to the next. <laughs> and you have a stubborn rock on your hands. It is not easy. So for those of you who move, God bless you for the miracle of moving. Members do not like to move. I've been in this church before you were born. Miris and I always sit right over there. If she's not here, I sit in the middle. Sister Pat, you're probably watching. God bless you. Sister Pat always sits. For those of you who know Sister Pat Mills, way back here. That's her seat. Sister Brazel, Brazel usually sits back there. That's her seat. Where's Bill Beckton? Brother Bill, if you're watching, God bless you. Bill usually sits right there. We have places where we sit. We have no official records of ownership, but that's our seat. And if we come and find someone else <laughs> in that seat, our worship is disturbed. Mm -hmm. This is, when I was a little boy, I was a Catholic. And the church I attended, a cathedral, they had names on the pews back then. They were names. That's where Sister Brown sat and Sister Smith. If they did not come to church a Sabbath morning, nobody sat there. Mm -hmm. There were names on the pews. Sister Brown, Brother Smith, Sister Wright, Brother Wrong. They, those were their places. <laughs> anyway, God bless you for cooperating with your handsome pastor. How are you? How was your week? Did you pray? How many times? Without ceasing? For those of you online, God bless you wherever you are. I have some friends who watch regularly, and may the Lord bless them. I won't say what country, because then I'll have to mention every country on the globe. But wherever you are, thank you for joining us here at the Ypsilanti SDA Church in Ypsilanti, Michigan, where the temperature this morning when I woke up was, what, 8? Or I have a friend from Kenya who said, I would like to experience zero-degree weather. <laughs> Uh, you have to be my guest. That's right. Be my guest today. Let me watch you shoveling six feet of snow. All right. This is a day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Now, God made seven days. Am I right? But he blessed one. Mm -hmm. You know, people say, I can worship God any day. Well, thank you. That's what God wants. The argument isn't on what day you should worship God. The question is, which day did he bless? That's the question. We should worship God every day. Not just on Sabbath, every single day. But he only blessed one. And Balaam told Balak, what God hath blessed, I cannot reverse. Are you with me? The blessing of the Sabbath cannot be placed on Tuesday or Wednesday or Friday or Sunday. Is there anyone present with us this morning? You're not a Seventh-day Adventist. May I see your hand? Any guests? You're not a Seventh-day Adventist. 
I'm sure they are online, wherever you are. Thank you very much for joining us, and God bless you. Our subject for this morning, instant healing for chronic illnesses. What did I say? Let me see. My phone is turned off before I tell you. Turn yours off. Yes, mine is off. If you don't need it, notice I said, if you don't need it, please turn it off so that it is not a disturbance in the presence of a holy God. Favor number two, while I'm speaking, pray for me and say, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. I say it all the time. I mean it each time. One wrong word can ruin a person's worship experience. Or the right word said the wrong time. Are you with me? Yeah. Jesus told the disciples, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. It may not be the right time to tell the person, take off that earring or lengthen that skirt. It may not be the right time. Truth must be allied with timing. But ask God to put his words in my mouth. It's always the right time for that to happen. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. I want to speak God's words. And favor number three, I want you to think. It's the thinking church. Think. Uh, Isaiah 1.18, Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we've gathered to worship you and to worship you alone. In order to do that in a manner that pleases you, we need your spirit. Because you've called upon us to worship you in spirit and in truth. And so, Father, be with us now, I pray, in the person of your spirit. May he guide our thinking, our speaking, and our behaving. If we've sinned against you, forgive us, Father. You love to forgive because you delight in mercy. And there's no greater mercy than forgiveness of sins. Grant us, Lord, the wisdom from on high. Open our minds that we may understand what you're putting into my mouth. Bless all those online, dear God, particularly our guests. Place your healing hand on the sick and remind them that as Jesus healed when he was on this earth, he is no different today. Father, I humble myself before you. Use me for your glory, dear God. Do the same for every other preacher right now in an Adventist pulpit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Matthew. Well, not Matthew. Let's go to Mark 5. What's our subject? All right. Instant healing for chronic illnesses. And keep in mind, not all illnesses are physical. All right. Mark chapter 5. What verse are we reading? <laughs> verse 25. I didn't tell you. Mark 5, and I read from the King James Version of the Bible. And a certain woman which had, what, an issue of blood, how long? 12 years. That's a long time to be sick. A certain a woman which had an issue of blood 12 years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather, come on, grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Read the next verse with me. And immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she what? Yeah. Felt where? In her body that she was healed of that plague. Immediately. How long was she suffering? Twelve years. Go to Luke chapter 13. Let's read from verse 11, our subject, instant healing for chronic illnesses. Luke 13, reading from verse 11. Do you have Luke 13? What was Luke's profession? He was a medical doctor, yes, so Luke will approve of this presentation. And behold, a woman which what? Had a spirit of infirmity, how long? 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise, what, lift up herself. She was like this, perhaps a spinal problem. And when Jesus saw her, he called to her and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. Read verse 13 for me. And he laid his hand on her and immediately she was what? Made straight and glorified God. How long was she in this condition, bent over, spinal problem? 
18 years. How long was the woman with the issue of blood? 12. Add the two figures. 30. Let's get an average. What is it? 15 years apiece. Let me slow down. Let's say each one 15 years sick. 118, 112, that's 30. Divide by 2, 15. Let's go to John 5. What's our subject? John 5, we read from verse 1. It was my reading at the beginning of my remarks. Do you have John 5? We read from verse 1. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of what? Impotent folk, come on, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. Now, read the next verse for me. And a certain man was there which had what? An infirmity thirty and eight years. We went from 12 hmm, to what? 18 to what? 38. What's that total? 38 and 12, 50. Then we have 13, that's 63. Am I right? Am I my math right? 38, 1. 12, the other, that's 50. Then 13, that's 63. What's the average? 20 something, 21? Per person, let's make an average. That's chronic illness, yes or no? Is that chronic illness 21 years? Mm hmm. But in each case, what word did we read? Immediately. Now, before you think God heals everyone immediately, this is a side of God he exercises sometime. Immediate healing, immediate delivery, but you and I don't know if we're the ones upon whom he will work immediately. We just don't know. Look at John 5 again. Now there is at Jerusalem, verse 2, by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda. In these lay a great multitude, do you see that? Of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Of all that multitude, Jesus healed one. You may be the one. You cannot say, well, the Lord no longer heals as he healed 2,000 years ago. Even if he heals one person a year in Michigan, you might be that person. And so you come to him. And you say, Lord, I have this, I have that, I have the next. I've been in this condition 12 long years. And my wife has left me. I've been in this condition 18 years, and my husband left me. I've been in this condition 38 years, and the insurance company dropped me. Well. Notice what the man said, sir, I have no man. But do you have a God? Well. Do you have a God? Yes. If humanity cannot help, can God help? The answer is yes. And so he told Jesus, I have no man. Christ probably said, but you have God. And what men could not do for him, Jesus did in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Sometimes God functions that way immediately. But let's go to Genesis 1. What's our subject? You're a little slow. I'll try you again later. Let me pray again. Fathers, I continue speaking for you and with your beloved people. Direct my mind and my mouth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Genesis 1, we'll read from verse 1. And please, let's read verse 1 looking up. Don't read. Just say it. Come on. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, that's big. That's a lot of work. Are you with me? No one can measure the size of the universe. I've told you before, to cross our galaxy, 
which is the Milky Way, it'll take you 200,000 years if you're traveling at the speed of light. And the speed of light is about 300,000 kilometers a minute, a second. I said a second. You travel that speed, it takes you 200,000 years to cross one galaxy, and there are billions. Now, the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. How did he do all of that? Go to verse 3. And God said, what? Let there be light. Read the next few words. And there was light. That was instant. Immediately. But how many days of creation were they? Six. Two thousand? There were six. <laughs> Are you with me? The light was made immediately, but creation took time. I'm talking to myself. Nobody's listening. The whole work of creation, come on, took time. It took six days. But the light was made in a flash. God may work immediately, or God may take his time. In Luke 17, when the Jesus uh, was approached by ten lepers, they said, Son of David, have mercy upon us. Jesus said unto them, what? Go, what? Show yourselves. Come on. Did he heal them immediately? No. One of the rare occasions on which Christ did not heal immediately, he said, listen, go to the... By the way, Jesus respected the church. I need to tell you that. There's some members who don't like the pastor, the conference president, so I'll send my tithe to North Korea. No. Respect the structure of the church. Jesus was God. He knew the hearts of the Pharisees, the leaders. He told the Jews, do what the Pharisees say. Don't do what they do. Respect the church. Please. And so Jesus told those ten lepers, go show yourselves to the priest. Why? Only the priest could declare a leper cleansed. Now this is Jesus, <laughs> who was God. And he told them, you go to the earthly leaders. Because I respect that system. Because I was the one who set it up. <laughs> well. Are you with me? God set up the system called the church. Be careful how you handle God's church. When the Israelites were in Babylonian bondage, they were still God's children. When the Babylonians got out of hand, God sent the Medo Persians to deal with them. Having said that, let me redirect your mind. What's our subject? The kingdom of Babylon existed from when to when, those of you who are historians and prophecy experts. Come on. We haven't got all day. The people online got it right, but I want you to get it right. <laughs> Babylon, we have four major kingdoms. Remember the image? Babylon, Middle Persia, Greece, Rome. Now, Babylon from how long? 605 to 538, 537. Okay. Middle Persia, about 537 to 333. Greece, 333 to 168. Rome, 168, 476. All right. But 605 to about 537, 538. That's a long time. You know how long it took God to overthrow Babylon? One night. Now, some of us, we cry because the Republicans are in power, or we cry because the Democrats are in power, or we cry because nobody's in power. And we pursue all kinds of man-made systems to change God can change a system overnight. Those Babylonians had no clue what happened. The Medo Persians overthrew Babylon by God's direction in one night. God can move fast. How long were they in Babylonian captivity? 70 years. That took time. Which means God's hardest problem is not the Babylonians, it's the Jews. Ah, you missed it. <laughs> God's biggest problem is the Jews, or was, are the spiritual Jews today, not the Babylonians. He got rid of them in one night. Took him 70 years to get the Jews ready to leave. But let me get back to hopeful statements. 
God can fix in a second what has been wrong for 10 years. Are you following me? That's the way God is. And so God said, let there be light. And there was light. Instant. God looked over six days of creation. All of creation took time. Light was instant. It is up to God to decide. Will I change your circumstances in a flash or let it run for a while? Let us go now to Matthew chapter 14. Let's look beyond sickness. Matthew 14, we read from verse 22. Our subject, instant healing for chronic illnesses. It's 1225. We have time. Do you have Matthew 14? We read from verse 22. I may the Lord please put his words in my mouth. And straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. When the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with the waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night... Jesus went unto them, finish the verse, walking on the sea. When did he come? The, that's the darkest. The, the Romans had four watches, you see. This is the fourth, the darkest. You know, it's always darkest before, before dawn. He came when it was darkest. And these men were in what conditions? Read verse 24. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea. Come on. Tossed with the waves, for the wind was contrary. They were in danger of losing their lives. Frequent storms would erupt on the lake, uh, the Sea of Galilee. Christ came when they were in trouble, and they couldn't see five feet ahead of them. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus came unto them walking on the sea. God may come to your deliverance when you have hit rock bottom. But God sees that rock bottom is necessary to make a change in your character. Mm. God doesn't allow you and me to hit rock bottom because he delights in our suffering. He sees rock bottom sometimes is necessary to bring out of people. Mm. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. Now, read verse 27. What does that say? But straightway. What's that word? Immediately. Immediately. Jesus spake unto them, saying, What? Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. Immediately he put their worries to rest. Now he may take a little time in somebody else's case that the person may listen to me. The sooner you learn God's lessons, the sooner he stops the trial. The sooner we learn the lessons God has for us, the sooner he ends the suffering. Because the purpose of suffering as God directs it is correction and character improvement. Verse 28, and Peter answered him saying, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee. On the, just call me. Don't call them. Just call me. And he said, verse 29, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the waves boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried saying, Lord, save me. Read verse 31. And immediately, Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, what? O thou of little faith, wherefore, what did he doubt? He doubted he could continue walking on the water. When he saw the waves, Jesus said, why did you doubt? Now that's a critical question. Because doubt never pleases God. To doubt God is to call his character into question. Let me say it again. To doubt God is to call his character into question. Any attorney who is defending a client will try to prove that that witness on the stand is what? Unreliable. Now, the person only lied once in the past. Once. 
the attorney will use that to show this witness is unreliable. Now, how many times has God lied? Never. Can we trust him? Yes. So when he says, call unto me, and I will answer thee. When he says, call unto me, I will deliver thee. Do you believe it or not? Yes. To doubt is to bring God's character into question. And immediately, Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him. Someone wrote me a few days ago, weeks ago, pray for me. I'm sinking in debt. Literally sinking in debt. Can Jesus catch that person? The answer is yes. But he will do it his way, his time. It may be instant or it may take time. The Bible tells us Abraham came into Canaan land when he was 75 years old. He prayed for a son. Got involved with Hagar. God did not want that son, so spiritually that wasn't a son. Spiritually. He finally got Isaac when he was 100. How long did he pray? 25 years. I've told you this before. Isaac prayed 20 years for Rebecca to have a child. Sometimes God takes time. On other occasions, he works immediately. Now, because our subject is instant healing for chronic illnesses, L.Y. writes in the Desire of Ages, page 823, paragraph 4. What did I say? Page 823, paragraph 4. He is just as willing to heal the sick today as when he was personally on the earth. And he does that work of healing through his servants, the apostles. Christ isn't coming down to heal you or you. He has instruments. Remember James 5.16, don't go, they're just 5.14. If any sick among you, do what? Mm -hmm. Don't call Gabriel. Call God's duly elected leaders. Let them call home the elders of the church. Mark chapter 6, verse 7. And when he had called unto him the twelve, he sent them out by two by two and gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out. God has agents through whom he mediates and communicates his healing power. You sick? Call for the elders of the church. It could be there are people in the Adventist church who are sick for no good reason. Because they simply will not follow James 5. Call for the elders of the church. Well, or they call when the person is on a deathbed and have five minutes to live. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible doesn't say call the elders when you're just about to die. If you're sick... Are there mental illnesses, yes or no? Yes. Call the elders of the church. In addition to anything else you do. Don't fire your therapist, no. But call the elders of the church. Give God a chance to show off. Hmm? You know God loves to show off. <laughs> he does. Mm. You know where he shows off? Now, when an actor performs on stage, the actor comes on stage. Now, your life is a stage. God wants to get on that stage and, come on, show off. You don't have to join him. You provide the stage. And you stand in the wings and watch God show off. So you will not work on Sabbath. He gives you a better job and he shows off. You obey his health laws. He heals you and he shows off. That they may see your good works and glorify your father. Instant, he, instant what? Healing for? Whether it's a physical disease or a spiritual one. You may have had a sin problem for years. Go to Psalm 119 quickly. It's 25 to uh, something. One. Do you have Psalm 119? Tell me something about that psalm. 
It's the longest chapter in the Bible, yes. How many verses? Quickly. 119, no, that's, that's the, name of the, the number of the chapter. 176. We're looking at verse 133. Now read that verse carefully. It was written for you, not the person next to you. Let the person next to you decide it was written for me. Verse 133. We're looking at spiritual illnesses that has gone on for a long time, or that have gone on for a long time. That man in John 5, 38 years. Now perhaps there's someone 38 years in a spiritual condition. Psalm 119, verse 133. What does that say? Order my steps. Come on. In thy word, finish the verse. And let not any iniquity have dominion over me. What do you understand by let not any iniquity have dominion? What's dominion? Control. Power. What does that sound like with respect to habits people have? Addiction. Mm -hmm. An addiction is dominion. It's control. And you can't fight it. And so David says, look, God, break this addiction. But he says, order my steps where? In thy word. Because this is the power that breaks anything. When Lazarus was dead, what did Jesus do? He said, mm -hmm. Lazarus, come on, the word. Come forth, the word. We talked about the universe and creation. How did that happen? By the word of the Lord where the heavens made. And so the psalmist says, order my steps in thy word and let not any iniquity, whether it's smoking or alcohol or pornography, have dominion over me. You know God can break that overnight if he chooses. But we're not one text Christians. Go to Psalm 19. Psalm 19. Let's read verse 13, I believe it is. Psalm 19, verse 13, our subject, instant healing for chronic illnesses, whether the illnesses are physical or spiritual. God can move fast, or God can take his time. The choice is his, but it's good to know he can move fast in my life. Yeah. You have a delinquent child, the Lord can change that child overnight. It's up to him. What book did I say? Psalm, what chapter? 19, what verse? 13. Read with me. Keep back thy servant also from what? presumptuous sins. Finish the verse. Let them not have dominion over me. Break this thing, dear God, that has controlled my life. My blood pressure is right. My whatever is right. Everything is right physiologically. Ah, God, but I have pride. I'm stingy. I'm selfish. I haven't forgiven someone for 50 years. Break that. The Lord may do it. I was a, many years ago, I used to love to speed. I remember once very clearly, many years ago, Sister, Sister Dabney said to me one Sabbath morning, Sister Henrietta Dabney, she said, Brother Randy, I was coming to church, I was speeding, and you passed me. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I was speeding, and you passed me. I love to speed. When I was at Oakwood, some of us went to Andrews University in a car, car, five of us on the way back. I was doing, hold on your seats. What do you think my speed was coming back? Five people in that car. <laughs> That's for converted people, no. 125. The truckers were talking about me on those are the days of CB radio. Those were the days of CB radios, come back. Mm -hmm. And they were talking about this car that passed them flying. Five young people, each one with an undeveloped brain, and the driver is doing 125 in a Camaro. You see, young people aren't bad, they're just undeveloped. <laughs> they're immature. They're not bad. The brain is not yet fully developed. The experts tell us the brain develops between 25 and 30. That's when it develops until then, and it develops from the back to the front. So the last part that develops is the frontal lobe. <laughs> and you give that guy a car. <laughs> but one day I was doing a Bible study. Brandon, you were part of that Bible study. You used to meet back here. We'd meet all the time, and Mike used to come to that. And we did, one night we talked about surrendering everything to God. And I was leading the study. So when I went home, I said, wait a minute. If I teach that, I ought to do it. And so I sat in my car. I had a little blue CRX, Honda CRX. And I bought it so I can give no one a ride, just my wife and me. You see, I, that, 
forgive me, the Lord has forgiven me. It was a two-seater, no one can ask for a ride. Just made it and me. That's why I bought it. Ah, thank God for spiritual growth. Can you say amen? And I sat in the car. I said, Lord, I just taught a Bible class, and uh, I commit this car to you. It's yours. I'll just drive it. I'll change the oil, put in the gas. I'll, I'm your chauffeur, but it's yours. Two weeks later, I observed the car went from 36 miles an hour in gas to 46. Mm -hmm, I couldn't explain it. And I realized I had lost all my desire for speeding. Because after I made that arrangement with God, a couple of days later I got into the car to go somewhere, and the Spirit of God said to me as clearly as day, and God is listening to me now, this is my car now. You cannot drive it like that. From that point on, listen to me, the addiction I had for speed left me immediately. You know why? Because I committed that thing to him. You can drive your car like that, not mine. Let us try a total recommitment of the life to God. Because God fixes what's his. You didn't hear me. He fixes what's his. And a broken car, if we're the cars, brings little glory to God. He wants it fixed. That's why there's Calvary. Instant healing, come on, for chronicles. But it's up to God. Because he created light, how? Instantly, but all of creation, over time. He will decide whether he'll work in your life immediately or instantly. But either way, he will work. And so that man, 38 years, instantly. That woman with the issue of blood, 12 years, Instantly. The lady bound over him. The Bible says Satan had her that way. 18 years. Immediately. G Peter sinking. Immediately. The disciples were afraid. It is a spirit. Immediately he put their minds at rest. The Lord may want to do something for you. Come on, give me the word. Immediately ask him. Yes. If he doesn't do it today, he may do it immediately tomorrow. <laughs> Ah, nobody's listening to me. He may do it immediately tomorrow. Ask him. Yes. I am tired, dear God, of this situation. But also ask him, show me what I need to do. Because I may be contributing to this. I don't drink water at all. Lord, heal my kidneys. <laughs> Are you following me? <laughs> and I don't drink any water. The Lord may say, look, my son, drink some water. And I will work through the water. Are you with me? Yes. Lord, this is his walk, says God. Walk. Let me tell you quickly, then I'll let you go. A miracle does not have to be instant. You didn't hear what I said. A miracle can happen over time. Let me ask you this. If a lady on this side has cancer and God heals her immediately, a man on this side has cancer, God heals him in 10 months. They're both fully healed. Two miracles. One instant, one took time. Now, all of us want what kind of miracles? Instant. <laughs> but sometimes, no spiritual lesson is learned. You can go to heaven sick physically. You can't go to heaven sick spiritually. There are one-eyed people in the grave who will be in heaven. Are you following me? There's no disobedient person in the grave who will be saved. What I'm saying is this. God desires your spiritual healing first. Because if you're healthy, you're more qualified to sin. You didn't hear what I said. A healthy person can really sin against God. Of course, a healthy person can really glorify God. But God takes a risk. He takes a risk. Did he give Samson great strength? What did Samson do? You know what he did. No need to mention it on the Sabbath. You know what he did. And so it must be for the glory of God. It must be. Every miracle must be for the glory of God. And so tell God, Father, if you remove this condition, here's what I'll do for you. 
Even if you don't remove it, I'll still do it. But I want you to know if you do it. Instant healing for chronic illnesses, physical or spiritual. Is there something that you've been wrestling with for a long time? God may remove it today. He'll remove it tomorrow. Only God knows. But I'm saying to you, ask God. Ask him. But remember Psalm 119, verse 133, order my steps in thy word. One word for that is obedience. And let not iniquity, any iniquity, have dominion over me. Order my, lead me according to your word. In other words, obedient life. And see how God will work. How many of you will give God a chance to work a miracle in your life? Can I see you? Give him a chance. Invite him. Stand up with me. Remember, with God... All things are possible. Remember that. Why did Peter sink? He doubted. And Jesus said, why did you doubt? Doubt is self-sabotage. Yeah. Faith allows God to work his miracles. Father in heaven, we thank you for the experiences in the Bible. The man 38 years, the woman 12, the woman 18. Immediately, they, God, you reverse their conditions. But from time to time, you take time. Whether you work immediately or you take time, they, God, be merciful to your people who are wrestling with one thing or the other. As they cry to you, remind them, they, God, you overthrew an entire kingdom in one night, the kingdom of Babylon. Please, Father, move in our lives as we give our lives to you as a stage on which you may demonstrate your goodness and in your own way engage in divine showing off. We thank you for your mercies in the past. But let us say like Job, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Let us put our hands in yours and leave our hands in yours, I pray. In Jesus' name, let God's people say, Amen. And amen. You may be seated.